welcome to another edition of DXB Today. And what a day it has been today. Uh, certainly if you've been up and around on the roads of the UAE and around the World Government Summit uh, site, you will know it's been a busy, busy one. And with good reason. We have the great and the good of the world with us here today in Dubai. And they're going to be here for the next three days of the summit itself. We've got world leaders. We've got ministers. We've got decision makers. We've got those from the public and the private all coming together in discussion. Two big themes for you, uh, the new global shifts and of course sustainability. So we've got our work cut out, bring it all together over the next 60 minutes. Let's see what's coming up on the show tonight. We've got all the highlights from day one of the World Government Summit, bringing together more than 4,000 delegates, thought leaders and policy makers. And I went down to meet the most 100 influential people, according to Time magazine, at the Times 100 Impact Awards. That took place this weekend. Plus, we've got sustainability experts joining us in the studio as we explore the World Government Summit themes of sustainability and the new global shifts a bit further. So guys, the World Government Summit, one of the most important events here in Dubai. We've got world leaders coming from all around the world. How do you feel about all of that? Well, we knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, we shouldn't be surprised, but I, I personally have been surprised. I've been surprised by the uptake uh, of, I've been surprised by the standard of the delegates that have turned out uh, for day one. You never really know when those lists are announced uh, originally, you don't actually know who's gonna turn up, who's not gonna be able to make it, etc. cetera. Um, but given the foundations that have been laid by former world government summits, um, and the fact that there was so much emphasis put on this year's, I'm really, really amazed by what has been achieved on day one and what could be achieved over the next couple of days. Now, how much of that is down to the success of COP28 mm -hmm. uh, remains to be seen. One certain partnership or one alliance I can certainly see is that we've waited for bated breath to see what 2024 was going to be the year of. They delayed the announcement of that. We tried to get it out of the year of team when they joined us here in the studio. We learned last week it was going to be an extension of the year of sustainability with good reason. Yeah. The legacy play from COP28, continuing that conversation into 2024. So no big surprise that one of the, uh, the key foundations, the key themes of this year's World Government Summit, or WGS, should we call it WGS? Yes. Let's call it WGS, otherwise yes. we're going to mix our words all night, <laughs> uh, is of course being sustainability. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, I think it's quite key what you said, Tom, is what, how much of that is the impact from COP28, but how much of that impact is from Expo 2020 as well. Yeah. So that whole theme of sustainability um, has been something that has been an ongoing theme for the country for a very long time since that. So a lot of these world leaders have been like, right, okay, the UAE, Dubai, and, and all of this surrounding region is really making an impact. So how can we be a part of this? And so it's no surprise that everyone's going to turn up. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because, uh, and we're going to highlight that today. I know you've been down to the, the Time 100 uh, event. That wouldn't have been here had it not been for the fact that the WGS, the World Government Summit, is going on at the moment. You know, we've got so many big name delegates coming mm -hmm. to town that it makes sense for a, a, a huge international brand like Time to, to have an event like that here. So you've got all these feed off tertiary events. We saw that at Expo. We certainly saw that at, at, at uh, COP28 as well. All the sort of feeder events that fed into it. And you're so right to highlight the fact, yeah, all those three big events we had, world leaders maybe coming to the, the UAE, maybe coming to Dubai for yeah. the very first time. They saw decisions were made, they saw progress. And it's no big surprise that this is the biggest and best uh, WGS we've had to date. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have everyone coming in. And since today is also about sustainability and we're discussing that for the World Government Summit, who better to have in the studio with us than our guest co-host? So let's see who it is. Hello, my name is Tatiana Antonelli and I'm the founder at Goombook. I can't wait to see you guys in the studio shortly. Wonderful. Tatiana will join us in just a little bit. But first, we went down to find out a little bit more about what was going on at day one of the World Government Summit. Have a look. I am down here at the Medina Jumeirah where the World Government Summit is kicking off on day one. A very wet start to the day, but it definitely has not dampened the mood. The key theme for this year is shaping future governments.
there are over 25 world leaders, 140 governments, and over 85 international organizations, and 4,000 plus people in attendance, all discussing very important topics that impact our lives as citizens, as residents, such as the digital economy, the future of work, and the future of mobility. I am personally so excited to hear from Sam Altman, the CEO of ChatGPT. We also have main addresses from world leaders and prime ministers and presidents, even the Bollywood king himself, Shah Rukh Khan. Hopefully that gives you just a little bit of a flavor of what's gone on down at the World Government Summit on just day one of three days. Plenty for us to cover and of course we've got it all covered right here on DXB today. Now, today's guest co-host, as you heard, is a sustainability expert dedicating her entire life and career to accelerating green living right here in the UA and across the region as a whole. Uh, one of the city's top environmentalists uh, uh, and of course an influencer in her own right. She is facilitating a social uh, entrepreneurship uh, and of course dedicated to sustainable development amongst other projects. A lady of many talents. Please welcome the founder uh, and the managing director of Goombook. It is our friend and yours Tatiana Antonelli. Tatiana, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. And, how, and who better to have? You know, here we are, <laughs> leaders from across the globe have descended on Dubai yet again, again. to talk yes. uh, all things uh, World Government Summit. I mean, look, let's, let's just reiterate, there are a number of topics on the table uh, at the World Government Summit, but no big surprise to me that sustainability has taken top building yet again this year. Year of Sustainability, as I mentioned, has been extended. So I was just trying to work out before you came on. I mean, I think you and I met, it must be best part of what, nine years, ten years ago now or something like that? Would it be that long or not? Even more. Even more. Oh, we're not going to wow. tell. <laughs> oh, we're not going to tell. <laughs> like but we were having a time. similar conversation. That's my point. We yes. were having a similar conversation. You were here championing all things sustainability. And finally, as was just mentioned a bit earlier on, we've had three huge events with big focus on. The message is getting across. Absolutely. And I think uh, it's very exciting to see this not only uh, coming together as world events, uh, so, but also now calling for action. And the World uh, Government Summit is about action and it's calling governments and, and experts and, and finance, the finance world also to come to the table to understand what are we going to do now, what can we put in practice, how are we going to fund uh, in terms of sustainability and, and climate action. Uh, mitigation, adaptation, and these are all topics that are really much linked to other uh, subtopics such as you know health and youth and education, um, digitalization of the world. All this is interlinked. So I think it's very important to keep sustainability there because it's not something on the side. Sustainability needs to be embedded in everything we do uh, at all levels, so from youth all the way up to, to government. Like you said, it's, it has to be embedded. And how, I just wanted to know how important it is and what are the things that the governments are doing in order to have a more sustainable future? So uh, a lot is happening. And yeah. I think uh, COP28 really uh, helped the government to express mm -hmm. what is being done uh, in the UAE, but also for other countries to come together and talk about their own strategies and the plans they have and long-term visions. Of course, at COP, there was a, a major focus on the energy transition mm -hmm. specifically, but um, a lot has been uh, delivered in terms of other things such as agriculture, food security, ocean health. Mm -hmm. um, it was incredible. And, you know, after so many years working in this space, to be able to walk around the blue zone and the green zone and yeah. meet all these change makers and experts who can really tell you their experience, how they've, they've done it, but also the opportunity to partner with them and mm -hmm. give another dimension to what we're doing in the UAE and, and also talk about what is happening here. I got a lot of people asking me, why do we need to protect the oceans here? What's, what's happening in the region? There is a blind spot for sure. So uh, it's an opportunity to talk about everything that's been done here um, to inspire the rest of the world. But also I think in terms of climate, this uh, region is an open lab. 
we've been living and this region has been thriving in a very hot weather. And not only people, but also nature mm -hmm. and animals and different species. So we could actually tell the rest of the world how our corals are surviving at 35 degrees, um, how we're able to you know, um, grow food with less water and, and, and less irrigation, how to adapt our infrastructure and our buildings to hot weather. So that's great. An, that's an unbelievable question. People are asking you, why do we need to protect exactly. the river? Right? <laughs> the, the majority of the planet is made up of water. So uh, you know what I mean? It's very important. Um, but when it comes to, as Tom was saying, you, you, you've seen and seen the growth and the progression over the years. Would you say it's, it's on the up in a good way? And not to call anyone out, but what sectors are doing better than others when it comes to that progression? Which? <laughs> this is a difficult Feel free question. To call anyone out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say um, there's a, there's an equal kind of progress, um, specifically because it, it's a need at, at a global level. I would say it's not something that uh, only the region needs to gear up to. Of course, we have different types of challenges. It's an oil-rich uh, area, uh, oil and gas. So we need to look at how we're going to, you know, face the energy transition and phase down. Uh, fossil fuels, but at the same time, uh, we're able here to take decisions faster. The government is very, very, I would say, uh, fast into putting in place new legislations, new regulations, working together with the private sector as well. So here, I would say there's, there's an ecosystem that is incredible and very dynamic that allows things to happen and, and be there after a year or two. Uh, when I look at, at Europe and other parts of the world, it takes maybe five, ten years to pass one regulation. So there's a lot of debate that happens. Yeah. And um, <laughs> here we've seen it also uh, during COVID. I mean, here it's just, you know, things happen immediately. Everyone was under an app in just a week. We could immediately uh, have access to vaccines before anyone, anyone else in the world. So. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it? it's certainly a marathon, not a sprint. We're not going to see results overnight. But the fact that we have seen agreements, we've seen movement, mm -hmm. we've seen the momentum building and continuing here at World Government Summit is something that I think uh, we should all take, uh, take sucker from at the moment. What I'm excited about tonight is the fact that we often hear, don't we, when we're talking sustainability, that we need the macro, we need the micro, we need uh, the, all generations, we need public and private all to come together as well. But we do need, and, and, and it all comes down to our individual decisions, but we also need big corporations to yes. start taking responsibility. We've got two superstars uh, of sustainability joining us, joining our third superstar. They're the, they're the sirens of super <laughs> super sustainability <laughs> here. They've been I talking like this talk, they've been shouting <laughs> about it for many years, and so finally the message is getting across. But seeing companies like HSBC and JLL, who we're going to be joined by shortly, dedicating entire departments now to sustainability gives me great hope. Absolutely, and they inspire other businesses to follow. Yeah, and do, but, uh, but are all businesses doing the same or not? Well, um, it depends also on the different stakeholders. I think it always starts from the leadership uh, in, in the private sector and in the big industries, but also it comes from regulation and legislation. Yeah. So whatever your country, where you're based, where your headquarters are, uh, what they're asking from you, reporting is coming up now you can't you know avoid to really talk about what you're doing everyone is asking for your reports you need to show what you're doing it's not anymore about declaring it it's yeah. about showing results yeah. um, so i think businesses have realized that it's an opportunity actually to be the first movers in the sector um, and at the same time to show that they're better than others mm. and definitely the first movers have acquired a lot you know of attention of um, of um, adoption from mm. customers from other stakeholders from partner and today if you're looking at business if i have to uh, partner with a new business i will look at what they're doing because mm. it's about my reputation who do i want to uh, partner with yeah. the good guys yeah. so <laughs> now it's about really doing it because it's important to do it and uh, and to show the rest that is done properly. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, Tatiana. We'll speak to you soon. One of the super sirens of sustainability. So coming up, we discuss global collaborations at the World Government Summit with the head of sustainability at JLL Plus. I interview some of the most influential people in the world right after this. <laughs> 